So, you've got yourself some OEM injectors, and you want to do some tuning with them, so naturally, you need to find out how much juice they squirt. The natural first course of action is to scour the internet for any information pertaining to your injectors. Unfortunately, the internet did not have your answer, or was simply too painful. And that is why you are here, with me, to do math and experience a different kind of pain. Delicious. In this video, I will show you how I accurately calculated my injector flow rate as well as my injector dead time slash open time slash latency. We will call it dead time for simplicity's sake. Injector flow rate is a fairly basic concept to understand, but some of you might be wondering what is injector dead time? Well, here's a basic explanation. Your ECU will send what is referred to as a pulse width to your injector. Let's say it sends a pulse width to the injector of 10 milliseconds. In an ideal world, the injector would open for exactly 10 milliseconds, injecting 10 milliseconds worth of fuel at the given flow rate of the injector. Unfortunately, we do not live in an ideal world, and the injector has physical components that take time to open. So, if the ECU sends a pulse to the injector of 10 milliseconds, the injector might only actually be injecting for 9 milliseconds. This difference between the pulse width sent to the injector and the pulse width that the injector actually injects is known as your dead time. In this case, the dead time would be one millisecond. If we give the computer accurate information about dead time, the computer has the ability to compensate for that by adjusting the pulse width. So, how does one communicate this vital information to their ECU? I am using a Speedwino ECU, so some of the things in this video will be Speedwino specific, but if you use a couple brain cells, you can probably apply the concepts of this video to whatever standalone ECU you happen to be using. First of all, let's go over the Tuner Studio settings we are currently concerned with. Firstly, in the Injector Characteristics tab, you will find the settings for the injector dead time. You can see that Speedwino calls this injector open time here, and then we have a value in milliseconds, which is a baseline of sorts. Then you'll see this graph, which will take that baseline and use it at essentially different percentages at different battery voltages. As you can see here, 100% for me is at 14.7 volts, because at 14.7 volts, my open time is exactly 0.6 milliseconds, which is my baseline. If we look down here at 12.3 volts, you'll see that I'm at 140%. So my open time there is 140% of 0.6 milliseconds. So 0.6 times 1.4. All right, let's talk about why you actually clicked on this video. How do we calculate our injector dead time? Well, I imagine there are several ways you could tackle this, but here is how I did it. First, I used the hardware test on Tuner Studio and a stopwatch to turn an injector on for exactly 30 seconds. Using an accurate scale, I then weighed the amount of fuel that was injected in said 30 seconds. This can obviously be used to calculate flow rate, but for now, all we care about is that, at least in my case, 123.3 grams were injected in that 30 seconds. The next thing that needs to happen, and this is key to keeping the math simple, is the injector needs to be turned on for the same amount of milliseconds. But those milliseconds need to be broken up into many, many pulses. We know that 30 seconds is 30,000 milliseconds, so the total pulses will have to add up to exactly 30,000 milliseconds. In the Tuner Studio hardware test, you will see there is a on pulsed function for the injectors. If you click this little question mark, you'll see that this will turn the injector on at a frequency of 30 hertz, so 30 pulses per second. I have my pulse width here set to 5 milliseconds. 5 milliseconds times our 30 hertz gives us 150 milliseconds, so that's 150 milliseconds per second that the injector is theoretically open for. Now, to find out how many seconds we need to have our pulsed function running in order to get to our target of 30,000 milliseconds, we simply divide 30,000 by 150, which gives us 200 seconds. So we'll run this test for 200 seconds.
We will then, once again, weigh our fuel, and if your injectors are obeying the laws of physics, this should amount to less than your previous weighed amount of fuel. In my case, this lesser amount was about 101.6 grams. So, how did this happen? We turned the injector on for the exact same amount of time, and we're left with less fuel. Well, if you haven't already guessed, this less amount of fuel can be attributed to dead time, and we can actually use it to calculate exactly what our dead time is. In order to do these calculations, we first need to know our flow rate. So we're going to turn our attention back to our old number of 123.3 grams. Simply divide this by 30,000, and that gives us a flow rate of 0.00411, grams per millisecond. Now, in order to get our dead time, all we need to do is take the difference between our two measurements, 21.7 grams, and divide it by our flow rate, 0.00411. This gives us 5,279.8, which is our dead time in milliseconds. You'll notice that this is a rather large number. This is because when we did our pulsed injector test, we pulsed our injector approximately 6,000 times. So we need to divide this number by 6,000, which at long last will give us our actual real injector dead time of 0.87996755858, which rounds to 0.9 milliseconds. Now, all that's left to do is repeat this process at a bunch of different battery voltages, and hooray, you're done. Before I wrap things up, I will quickly mention flow rate. This might be obvious to some, but if you want to find the flow rate in cubic centimeters per minute, simply multiply your first flow test number by 2 to simulate the full minute, and then divide by the density of gasoline, which is around 0.7 something grams per cubic centimeter depending on temperature. You could, of course, take all your measurements by volume instead of weight to begin with. I just didn't have an accurate volume measuring device, so I did it this way. All right, I think that pretty much sums it up. Congratulations on persevering through math class, and thank you very much for watching. It has been absolutely mind-blowing to see all the support recently. I've jumped from 200 subscribers to well over 2,500 since posting my wiring video, so thank you all for that. In case any of you were wondering, this is my stopwatch injector test setup. Certainly leaves a little room for human error, admittedly, but hopefully at least my math is correct.